The ground. It is our friend, and nothing is better when something is all new from the ground up. Behold, my friends, the all new 2022 Subaru WRX GT, an incredible rally car in civilian clothing, meant to drive the Subaru aficionado up, up, and higher into heights of great ecstasy, of driving pleasure. It will be something that they will all talk about for quite some time, even before they get one in their garage. Oh, look out, little birdie. Oh, sorry about that. Let's look at this car, shall we? It's kind of cool. Well, I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, this is the 2022 Subaru RX WRX GT, and the F stands for fun. Well, I, I fully realize there is no F in that name, but <laughs> this, this car is designed for fun, and uh, it's all new for f this year, which is kind of cool, and it features a, uh, a new global platform it's built on, which, what does that mean, this global platform business? Well... A lot of different things, but mainly it's an economy of scales situation where a manufacturer can actually build a number of different vehicles off of the same primary chassis. Doesn't mean that they're, they're not modified quite a bit to suit the particular task that that particular model is designed to suit, but at the same time, it does make it easier when you don't have to make a, a completely different rolling chassis from the ground up for every vehicle. So it's got that going for it. Uh, this ignition red, whoo! <laughs> yeah, that's what color it is. Also known uh, in law enforcement circles as arrest me red. Uh, features a whole bunch of new stuff. Basically, the WRX has been a, a famous rally car turned coupe, uh, excuse me, turned sedan that families can actually drive in. Uh, has undergone years of refinement and change and is a showcase for a lot of uh, Subaru's greatest new technology which includes all kinds of drive systems and engine configurations as far as over the years we've seen a lot of changes and what you have now is something that's uh, it looks amazingly low-key compared to the original WRX's you know you had your huge whale tail spoilers and everything else. This uh, looks much more, well, you could, you could take this to the shopping mall if one desired. But what it has more than anything else, it has the most powerful factory engine ever stuffed in one of these WRXs. It is, of course, an uh, intercooled, turbocharged flat four that puts out, hang on, 271 horsepower, ladies and gentlemen. That's really wicked. And it also has a, uh, a very interesting transmission, something that's called the uh, Subaru Performance Transmission, which is a uh, eight-speed automatic, basically. But it has all kinds of tie-ins with the all-wheel drive system, which is a, a torque dispensing unit set up primarily to let you have uh, access to torque where you need it most. Uh, in the wheels that are slipping except even more so I mean and the <laughs> one thing it is incredibly festooned with is driving modes you have all kind you can you can really use all the customization possible from the suspension it has a new suspension on it that we'll go into that is very electronically based so that you can tune it same thing with the steering same thing of course with the engine performance everything can be fine-tuned to your liking or your mood on the day. So we will now take a closer look at the uh, what the, the incredible powerhouse underneath the hood of this seemingly Clark Kent 
looking sedan. I, granted, it's a very handsome Clark Kent sedan, but doesn't look like it is as nasty as it really is. Attend. Oh my goodness gracious. Here it is. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the 2.4 liter Boxer L that is reinforced with all kinds of performance enhancements, let us say, including, of course, turbocharging with the top-mounted intercooler. Mmm, it feels cooler out here already just looking at it. And then all kinds of things like the, uh, as, as those of us who do a lot of our own maintenance love, we love this uh, oil filter right there that is uh, sitting on here. But as you can tell, it has a collar around it that has got a uh, coolant hose going to it. So it's cooled there too. And I believe there is actual an external oil cooler also mounted on the front of this. As a matter of fact, that, that may even be, uh, it may be cooling the oil that way. But the bottom line here is it's to keep things from getting too hot because this is one hot engine, man. As I said, we had 271 horsepower and 258 pounds of feet made nice and low at uh, 2,000 RPMs up to 5,800 RPMs is your torque peak. And you can feel it. I mean, it feels very, very substantial, this engine. And uh, it's got that typical Subaru boxer in that you got cylinder there, there, and a cylinder here, and here, see, here, here. Here, here, that's what I meant to say. And this snake on top, cause, not a snake, this spider on top, which really does look like a spider, by the way. And they should call it the spider intake system and the little trademark sign behind it, but they don't. Never listen to me. Uh, it, it is such a classic, unique engine because nobody else really does it quite like this. Like I said in a previous uh, examination of the Subaru Forester Wilderness, it, uh, Porsche also uses this engine design except with six cylinders, but it is an, it, an, it, it's such an interesting thing. And they are known for having perfect primary balance because as the, <laughs> as the cylinders are, as the pistons are boxing back and forth, one is usually in the, uh, in one position, the other is in the far position and they can cross that over so that basically all the vibration is eliminated theoretically. Uh, just by the motion of the crankshaft in the engine. It's, it's a good design. It's been around for a long time. If you don't believe me, see all them little airplanes flying around? Well, Lycoming is an engine manufacturer that has been building airplane engines. And airplane engines, despite you see headlines occasionally when one has an engine failure, those are incredibly rare. It's a very robust, durable design that will get you there and get you back. 99% of the time. Probably better than that. I don't know. I don't have the statistics. Who do I look like a statistics man? But anyway, there it is. A very, very potent power plant. And by the way, the most powerful that uh, Subaru's ever put in an R WRX coming right out of the factory and off your showroom floor, off a showroom floor near you. So, uh, and as you can see from the hood here, we got this little intake in here that goes right to your intercooler. So you get that direct flow of air in there to keep things cool. Because when you can cool down the air going into the turbocharging system, it, uh, it makes it denser and that's all good because then you can pack in more boost. And before you know it, you're flying down the road and the cops are behind you. So that's a nice way to go. Another interesting thing is, as near as I can tell, this hood is in fact made of aluminum. And I believe the front fenders are as well all in the interest of lowering weight. But that's also good for things like rust over time because you know you buy your WRX, you want to keep on with it. You don't want to just like sell it after a couple of years. You want to drive that thing all over everywhere. Enter rallies with it because that's what it was originally designed to do. Or you can just, you know, take it to the mall and to work and take the kids to, to uh, not soccer practice, but uh, I think that Navy SEAL practice. I think you can get, you can be a Navy SEAL now if you just start in high school or something. I, I don't know. There just seems to be a lot of, when I was growing up, there weren't that many Navy SEALs. Now there seems to be a lot of them. Uh, times change, don't they? So, what do you think? Beautiful? 
You like this styling? I think it's, they've done a very elegant job of sculpting this particular body style. And I personally don't miss all that crazy whale tail spoiler stuff. This is much nicer. And this is, of course, the GT model. And it has its own amenities, including things like, oh, check it out, these beautiful wheels. I do like these wheels except for one thing. They're, uh, I believe they're 20 inch. And uh, here's the problem with the 20 inch wheel. I hit a pothole yesterday and it, it felt like uh, someone had launched a photon torpedo into the bottom of my car. It really, bang, man. It was uh, physical, it was auditory, it was something. But the car seems all right. I was real worried that one of these wheels had taken it on the chin. Well, as far as I know, it didn't. And it's doing all right. These are extremely good tires, as you can see. So, friends and neighbors, we will go de in depth. We'll even go for, dare I say it, a ride. Oh, what, what's that? I'm here, I'm listening. <gasps> the trunk. Oh, how big is the trunk on this thing? Well, okay. All right, fair question. Let's have a look. See if I can figure out how to open it right away. There we go. <laughs> and I uh, see it's, it's it's not bad. It's not bad in here. I can see various things. And look at this. Look at what I found in the trunk area. Uh -huh. See how I did that? See what I did there? And there is your Monroni. And as you can see, this is what I would consider the loaded top of the line WRX. And it goes out the door for $42,890. But it is very, very well equipped with all kinds of things. Most of which you can't actually see. You can just feel. Like the Recaro seats. I mean, well, you can see them. I mean, they're there. And they have these huge bolsters on them. But a lot of this is mo most appreciated when you drive it because it has to do with the performance of the car and the suspension and everything else. They don't fool around with this stuff. So, how about that? So, the trunk is perfectly acceptable. Do we have a spare? Do we, do we have a temporary spare? Ah, oh dear. Motility kit. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Okay. Okay. Disappointed! I don't like to add. Oh well, can't be perfect, can we? If you go on a rally, I suggest you strapping a, a full size spare on the roof. That's that's the way to go with that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, onward. Okay, well, first, if you will accept my apology for the strange flicker, I don't know why this is flickering. This is not a virtual uh, instrument cluster. Cluster. We're looking at it all. This is a mechanical in instrument cluster. Very clear, very concise, very easy to read. Uh, however, however, it does seem to be flickering a little bit. At least on this camera, it does. Maybe it won't when it'll. it'll uh, maybe I'm talking about something that's not even going to happen when it's ultimately projected, if you will. But anyway, the uh, the instrumentation on this car is very, very. Uh, what I would describe as perfect for this type of performance vehicle because it's nice concise clear everything's where you expect it to be and in the in between there you get your, uh, your what we like to call your your trip computer console which has a bunch of little things in there and you can change your information there's there's you yeah, to empty miles per gallon all that kind of stuff and various timers and uh, since we're not rolling at the moment we can't have a display telling us what our uh, tire pressure is, but uh, you know, we understand. We, we, we're cognizant of that. And here's our compass. It says we're heading almost due north, which is correct. I can vouch for that. There's a radio selection. The outside temperature at 88 degrees, which incidentally was 104 earlier, and that's just obscene. Uh, and this, this is our boost. And uh, right now we're at a negative 9.4, and the peak is 13.3. So 
you can observe that if you're in if you're just really into you know boosting that's that of course is the air the psi going into the uh, turbocharger and and there we go back to our uh average where's our trip meter is it in there oh i haven't said trip meter is actually at the bottom so that's good now let me tell you of an annoyance may i share with you the annoyance it's this thing around here you see that yellow light that yellow light never goes off provided that you have the lane warning departure or also known as the lane departure warning turned on off <laughs> See, I, I just hate this thing and, and Subarus have had these for years now and if you turn off this thing so let's say we're going down a nice little, little country road there and it's got the uh, it's got the double yellow line in the middle and you start to because you're apexing a little wide or something like that the car goes a little over to that side towards the double yellow line and what happens beep 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 it, it's annoying i hate it so i turn it off and most people i think most of the subarus i've been in with people drive you i always look to see if that little yellow light is on because it, it annoys people uh and the fortunate thing about it is uh at least you don't have to turn on every single time. It doesn't go back to the default position of being on every time you restart and reboot the car. And that's good. I, I give them credit for that. But uh, how, do you, how do you turn that off? Um, it's in here somewhere, but it's nowhere immediately here. Because over here we have our uh, stereo controls. And over here we have our cruise controls. And there's your telephone right there on off type of thing when you, you hang up you see hang up pick it up that that kind of thing and then you have your uh, selected favorite favorite selected uh, radio stations and then this is our this is our drive mode let's go there because that's really entertaining is all get out now if you hit the uh, drive mode here we'll now go to normal now look over here on your main screen which there we go look at all the different settings you can put it on uh, you have a number of choices. Oh, I hate it when it does that. Uh, you have a number of choices when you're in sport. Now we're in sport. Uh, you can or can't select w which one of these things you want to... Uh... It actually is telling you where everything is settled more than anything else. And uh, I think if you go over to individual then you can really fine tune this to what you want suspension you can have on comfort all-wheel drive you can have one i want mine on normal eyesight uh, i didn't realize you eyesight is of course the system eh? it's uh, two cameras up there that reads the road for you and uses that information to do uh, all kinds of different things and i'm sorry about that glare god where did that come from so this is one of the things now subaru likes to call this format tablet format I call it uh, portrait format and I don't like it on cars I prefer landscape format which I'd have to pick the car up and turn it on its side in order to have that in the proper orientation for you uh, but there we go and I mean like I said we do have the different modes we have uh, sport uh, excuse me normal and you can see what is darked out here you can and can adjust on some of this stuff those are the settings that it is giving you when you put it in one of those until you get to individual and the individual is where you have all your fun uh, i'll leave that on comfort uh normal for the steer steering now nah, let's go with sport and so that's the fun one that's the really fun one and it goes all the way down to i still don't know eyesight about echo comfort standard and dynamic i'm not real sure what it's doing i'll have to try to look that up and uh never tell you what it means <laughs> but, and i've always associated eyesight purely with just the safety systems where it's uh, uh lane keeping and emergency braking and all that kind of good stuff and i don't know where there would be an eco setting for that but I reckon I'll figure that out. I have showed you, or will show you, when driving, the uh, shifting lever here has your standard kick over to manual, and you have your paddles if you want to use them. And well, actually, 
that's what you have that's you have to use them you have no other choice huh interesting and uh, what else do we have for your entertainment now I was just reading a, a, a little summary by Consumer Reports on this very vehicle and they really liked the uh, they said it had plenty of buttons to do everything and uh, I disagree with my good friends that are oh, they're less than 50 miles from here um, it does have a volume and a tuning button for the radio which is great welcome but uh, as far as the climate control I find this very counterintuitive and we got to go home here let's go home oh we were home sorry uh, and I'm not real sure settings all right now this is what I'm curious about here clock display remainder screen to the thing camera climate control welcome screen hmm 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 periodic rest notification oh we love that don't we um, I don't really understand birthday list. <laughs> yes, and by the way, before you adjust your suspension, be sure to incorporate your birthday list. If, it, if it's a good friend of yours birthday, it will go to the comfort, well, no, it's, I'm lying. Oh, and anniversaries, you can put your anniversary in your car. Wow, they think of everything. So I, you know, I still haven't run into an easy way to turn the, uh, unless, what happens if I do that? Nothing. So where is, look, look with me, hey, can you see, it? where is it? See, there's our, uh, when we turn off our traction control, there's our, our trunk opener. But I have no idea where the switch is. Oh, that's your sunroof, that's your uh, roadside assistance, if equipped. <laughs> so I don't really know what to tell you guys about that. I'll have to find it. I don't know where that switch is. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Let's try this. Go to car. Drive mode select, auto vehicle hold. Steering responsive headlights. Well, that's on. Driving assistance. Pre-collision brake and lane. Departure prevention function. Uh, all functions, what happened? Yeah, it went off. There we go. <laughs> okay, so that's where that is. It, they used to just have a switch that was very convenient. Uh, now let's turn it all off. There we go, and there the light is back on again. Okay, see, this is the life we lead now in these cars. Uh, I'm not real enamored with how Subaru does this, but you may find it fine, just fine. Uh, they make up uh, the, these Recaro seats that I like so much with their generous side bolsters. Uh, that makes up for that. So, And uh, the handling and the uh, incredible power and the smooth shifting transmission, that makes up for the ludicrous... <laughs> the, the tablet orientation of the uh, center display screen. I just don't like it. It's just my, this is a personal preference, guys. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you think it's the best, best thing since sliced bread, and God bless you. Enjoy. Buy two. So that's our interior for the most part for you, for the, uh, from the driver's cluster. And Subaru has come a long way. Uh, and they definitely go things, uh, do things the way they like to do them. And even if it's much different from how the mainstream, if you will, does it. And I say kudos for that. What lies beneath is often as important as what lies above. Well, yes and no. But this is our basic undercarriage of our WRX. And what surprised me, I don't know what I was expecting. I think I was expecting a lot more coverage in terms of, uh, you know, those wonderful little plastic covers that we see so much of nowadays uh, to protect the car because this is, after all, ostensibly a rally type of vehicle. Uh, and you need to protect all these bits 
from uh, you know your your rally detritus that you get when you're smashing down a uh, well let's say like a forest road or something like that but it doesn't look overly fragile uh, there are some protections to be sure uh, in a few places here and there but uh, there's a lot that's exposed as well so but look at that look at that suspension componentry with your aluminium they really, like I said, they, they outdid themselves on the suspension of this car uh, to get both uh, exceptional handling, even on really nasty, bumpy roads, and decent ride comfort. They did a nice job. And, of course, you saw your oil filter earlier. It's right on top of the engine, so that's not hard to get at. And I believe your oil filter, uh, excuse me, your oil drain plug is right in this vicinity. Uh, I don't know for sure, but I think it's very easy to get to, more than likely. Now this is a skid plate right here, and it is uh, of the plastique kind. But this over here, on the other hand, this is solid metal. So, you know, it's a mixture, a potpourri, if you will, of protective surfaces to help keep this car in one piece as you rocket your flash into the outback or wherever. And so, we will return to the surface, where there is light. And much greater comfort, actually. Wow, here we go. In this mean, fairly lean rally machine. And I have nothing more to add to that. You know, the interesting thing about the Subaru WRX is it's been around a while now. Many permutations, many generations. And this latest version, uh, I have to say, is the one I've liked the most. I, I, I'm, all, I'm so old, I go back to the battles between the Subaru RX and the Mitsubishi Evo. Evo? Evo! And I always kind of liked the Mitsubishi more because it just felt, I don't know, I just enjoyed driving it more. It just felt better to me. But, you know, Mitsubishi is Mitsubishi in America, and that means I don't know what the heck they're doing. Uh, but Subaru, on the other hand, continues to make this amazing car. And it has all kinds of amazing things, and it gets better all the time in terms of power, handling, braking, and just general all-around comfort. And as earlier generations have done, they put Recaro seats in these vehicles, which are, uh, they grab you like a glove to, you know, some, now, let me, let me illustrate. If you're going down the road in a car without these huge side bolters, and you start doing this, you know what happens? You do this in the, in the car. And But when you have these beautiful Recaros that have these very generous side bolsters, you do nothing. You just stay in the seat. They are so supportive and so great. And, uh, and that pays dividends just for long trips too because a lot of times a, a seat that feels really initially very, very firm will turn out to be your best friend on a long stretch when you're actually in the saddle for hours at a time. Uh, now the interesting thing too about the Subarus, they've, they've added stuff, they've taken stuff away, they've, uh, and, and the, the, this version, which is the GT version of the WRX, is pretty much the top of the line right now. And it doesn't seem to have a lot of hocus pocus. It does have a ludicrous amount of adjustments you can make. This particular model in particular, in, in a particular sense, has uh, suspension adjustments you can make. So the suspension itself reacts to the type of road you're on based on what the suspension is doing to limit movement, to dampen, increase damping when necessary, and uh, basically keep the car stable. And, but you can adjust it and customize it, which I will show you in a little bit. 
if I haven't already. Like I said, when I, I edit these things, I have no idea what's going on. When I'm editing, I just, ah, I'll put this part in here, and then you can see the dashboard and how everything works before we take it for a drive. That's how I usually do it. Well, I haven't done that part yet. This is kind of like breaking the fourth wall, as we say in the cinema business. That woman just threw litter at, at me. Hey, old woman. You want to mess with me? Huh? Huh? I will surround you with my speed. If you've ever seen Flash, and he goes like really fast around things, and, and makes him like so you can't go anywhere, I could do that to you in this car. This is a very, very, look at the color. It's, it's Flash's suit color. They call it Ignition Red, but I'm all. Just between you and me, I like to refer to it as Flash Red. Now, which way are you going to go? I hope you're going right and you'll get out of my way, lady. Nope. Boy, it's just not my day, is it? Now, I'll go right then. All right, we'll go this way. When you have your seatbelt undone, ding, ding, ding. Neil, there's a, there's a chime. Oh, not even a chime. It's kind of a, it's kind of a micro gong sound. But it never stops. Now, most cars will, will gong telling you to put your seatbelt on, then it'll get a little louder and then it'll just shut off because it realizes, oh, I give up. You're obviously doing something that you don't want to have the seatbelt on for a specific reason. Like you're putting along the road, setting out cameras or doing something like that. But this thing will not shut up until you, you uh, latch the, the seatbelt. Now, on the one hand, you can make a very good argument that, well, they're just being safe because this is a rocket ship you're in. I mean, after all, you're flying around with flash and you need to be securely fastened into your seat at all times. But, see that guy just flashed me because he's in an older WRX, but he immediately knew this was the new one. I'm amazed because one of the things I like about it is it is uh, it's very low key in that regard. But anyway, uh, like I said, this will continue to gong you until you put that seatbelt on, no matter what you're doing. And I really don't like that. I had a I had a friend of mine had a ranch out there in uh, Colorado. It was where was it in Colorado? It was the southern part of Colorado, as I as I recall. They later moved to a Minnesota, but anyway, he had a long ride to his mailbox and to the gate and to the highway where his, his farm was. And it was about a mile, I think. It was a long way. So, but he didn't like to put his seatbelt on because he was just putting along at, you know, 15, 20 miles an hour and he wanted to pop out, check the mailbox and pop in, put his seatbelt on and drive to town. But that particular vehicle, which I believe was a Ford pickup. I don't know why I think that, but I think it was. Same thing, it would not shut up. And all the other vehicles I've been driving lately, they usually turn off. Now I could be, I could be real mistaken, but I'm not gonna check it. There will be no correction at the bottom of the screen because I'm not gonna look at this. Look this up and say that it is now mandatory that all seat belts do that because I don't think it is. But anyway, they, I think they need to be, they need to strike some kind of a balance there. <laughs> it just can't keep, it'll drive you mad. And the next thing you know, you get angry. You get angry at it. And then what are you in? You're in basically a four-wheeled cruise missile. And you should not drive angry, as Bill Murray says in uh, uh, Groundhog Day, which is a movie I've incidentally never seen. Uh, but I do know he does say that to the groundhog, don't drive angry. And this is especially a kind of car that you do not want to drive angry. So don't. So anyway, uh, what else is annoying and happy? Well, the steering feel on this car is ex exemplary. And as I will show you, you have a number of adjustments you can make onto how stiff or light you want your power assist. But the overall road feel is excellent. Really, really good. Uh, and 
the ride quality, considering the cornering ability of this car, the ride quality is very good. It's firm, but it's not punishing ever. And I have it set right now in, uh, I believe I have it in comfort. God, I can never remember which car is which. <laughs> Here we go, mode. Let's try this. Yeah, Sport Plus, individual, comfort. That's where I am. I'm on the comfort side because I do like the softer suspension. So I can, I can feel what the tires and wheels are doing better than when it's firm. I'm not going to tell you the uh, World Superbike racer Carl Fogarty story every single time I get in a car like this, but I'll do it real quick. Carl liked his, he was a World Superbike champion multi times, and he had his suspension on his Ducati set up really, really loose by comparison to how most racers like to have it. And he beat the pants off of everybody, and he just liked it that way because he could feel what the bike was doing at all times. And man, he was amazing to watch. And it also forced him to be smooth on the control inputs and the power inputs and everything else because the thing would go to jumping all over the place if he wasn't smooth. Now the Subaru Sport transmission feels a lot to me like a direct shift but doesn't really have that abruptness that a lot of direct shift transmissions have so I'm not sure what exactly they got going on in that big transmission housing that is also uh, uh, affixed and uh, associated with the all-wheel drive system, which is super sophisticated. Uh, but it seems to be a very good shifting uh, transmission. You got your paddles up here, of course. You go to manual. I'm an eight, which is top. Seven, six, fifth gear. See how smooth that is? That's really direct, really smooth, really impressive. They've done such a nice job with the drivetrain on this car. They really, really have. And it's also, boxer four cylinders are, are interesting in that they, uh, I've experienced quite a few of them and, and they should be, they, they should all be really smooth because of the engine architecture design pretty much dictates perfect primary balance. However, they're not. Some of them are and some of them aren't. I, I've been very surprised at the wide variation difference between, and, not, and I'm not talking about just uh, individual build quality, but the displacement and whether or not it's turbocharged and all kinds of things. That's another good thing about this engine, is it is turbocharged, but it's, they did a great job with, uh, it, it doesn't hit abruptly at all. It, it tends to be a much smoother transition. Uh, when the boost comes on, it comes on in such a way that just makes the engine feel bigger. So uh, it really is a, a, a jewel of a, a drivetrain on this. And a lot of you are going to go out, get one of these things and abuse the hell out of it. Uh, whatever. But I'm saying for those of you who are not going to be constantly rallying it and flinging it down uh, dirt roads sideways and all that kind of stuff, it's also a real nice car, period, just to drive. Uh, I haven't driven, you know, I don't think I've ever gotten an, uh, a WRX during the middle of winter when there was snow on the ground. And usually when I get them, they have, uh, I think I've had several that have had basically summer tires as opposed to all season tires but I'm, I'd be real curious as to how this particular all-wheel drive system works in the snow it probably works great but this is it's designed for conditions other than snow being the primary what their overall engineering goals are is to how this thing performs flat out sideways loose substrate or not loose substrate either one uh, it's a it's a high performance car period and it, and it leaves you it leaves you in the manual mode when you leave it in the manual mode that's good some cars don't oh, nice I like it I like it and likewise a machine like this would be a positive liability without great brakes, right? Excellent brakes. 
very progressive, very easy to modulate, and very strong. Strong like wool. It's such a fun thing to drive, and there's so many high performance vehicles you can get that, that there are sacrifices you have to make. They're, they're abrupt in one way, the, the ride's exceptionally rough, or the engine's just a complete beast as far as uh, it's like you got some kind of a cougar underneath your hood that you can't control all the time. And this is refinement, refinement, refinement. And that is the best kind of high performance, in my opinion, to get, is when the car is also a very, very refined machine. How's our, how's our wind noise? Pretty high, but we're going 80 miles an hour all of a sudden. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. That's BMW territory when you suddenly end up going 80 and you thought you were going 50. Hmm. That takes me all the way back to when I was a teenager and the first time I ever drove a BMW. <laughs> I said, wow, I can't believe I'm going this fast. <coughs> but you were. I was. You will be if you're not careful. Stability is what we live in, in and we love to talk about the great stabilities. And I was also pleased to learn so many cars like this in the performance realm have different size front and rear tires. That puts a little tweak into the handling that, that uh, the cars sometimes will handle a little better with that. But that's really inconvenient when you want to rotate your tires or when you put a spare on that wheel. Well, that's it. Yeah. It just, there are some downsides to it, let me put it that way. And you can only rotate the tires from side to side. And they tend to be very expensive tires when they do that, when there's a different one on the front, different one on the back. A lot of cars do that in the performance realm. But when I looked at these on this particular vehicle, I was very happy to learn that it's the same tire size on all four tires. That just, it's balance, you know? They call it a symmetrical all-wheel drive. Be symmetrical, the tire size. They do not fool around, they do not lie when they say symmetrical, they mean it. That is for everyone to understand and to know. 104 degrees is what the car says. It is outdoors. That's, uh, that's crazy, man. Oh, we're doing better now. 103. Good thing I have all these coolers and intercoolers and inter-intercoolers and coolers for the intercooler cooler. And I have, I have, I have this. This is a, a thermos type of, of device. Keeps things cold. Boy, I tell you. You can get it, get the boy out of Texas, but you sure can't get the weather from following him, even if it took decades to catch him. Decades, I tell you. Oh, and you did know that this, the, the Subaru logo going way back is the constellation Pleiades, I believe. Anyway, that's, uh, that's unique in all of uh, the motoring world these days. I really like that. I like something completely different. As, as opposed to like the Honda I got parked over there that just says H, you know. Kudos to Subaru for coming up with such a nice idea. Years ago, it's been there forever. friends and neighbors that was fast so listen wear your seat belt if you're going above about 10 miles an hour if you if you're going slower it'll tell you to anyway but anyway take care out there think about the WRX if you want something that's like no other car on the road because they really are and I love that about it it's unique and in the meantime till we meet again take care of yourselves be safe and above all, drive carefully. Hey,
müssen heute wir gesagt wollen, sein viel ein